In 2016, Fred Levin was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer and was projected to live for less than a year. But just like he had many times before when facing a foe in the courtroom, Fred Levin beat the odds and his opponent. After surgery and treatment at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, a major teaching hospital for Harvard Medical School, Fred was declared cancer-free, and the world-famous attorney and philanthropist was soon once again making headlines. The medical conference is bringing in some of the top lung cancer researchers in the country to Pensacola. The conference was established in 2017 after Pensacola attorney Fred Levin donated $2 million to Boston's Brigham and Women's Hospital. Fred's $2 million donation to the world-class academic medical center established the Frederick G. Levin Distinguished Chair in Thoracic Surgery and Lung Cancer Research, and arranged for the creation of a lung cancer conference to be held in Pensacola for 10 years. Since starting in 2017, hundreds of local doctors, nurses, students, and patients have attended the Frederick G. Levin Lung Cancer Symposium to learn about the latest medical discoveries from the country's top cancer physicians and researchers. I feel very fortunate that the diagnosis of eight months is now three years plus. Before he passed, Fred was delighted the symposium was continuing despite the challenges. Attorney Virginia Buchanan is a longtime friend and co-chair of the Levin Papantonio Rafferty Law Firm's Class Action Department. She helps organize the Lung Cancer Symposium. It's one of those jewels that we have that we can attract people who are the best at what they do to come to our community and, and be a part of what we do. I mean, who gets that chance? There are so many communities uh, in the country and around the world and that we get chosen because of Fred Levin's um, vision and his desire to, to make his community be as rich as it can in quality health care. And our hospitals have embraced it, um, the CEOs of the hospital, the staff of the hospitals, and it's just been a remarkable partnership of all of them, and I just applaud Fred Levin that, that he, he could do that. The conference is already making a mark. Students, medical professionals, and others are seeing firsthand how the latest research and technology is helping to diagnose and treat cancer and provides more hope for patients than ever before. What has happened because the response has been so positive uh, and I think it's gotten so much respect and attention uh, really from around the world, uh, but certainly it has in the United States because the thoracic care providers, uh, Dr. Bueno in particular and all of his team, uh, all who are internationally recognized, um, they're able to promote what they do wherever they are, but because they've become invested in this, they've seen the, the outpouring of love and respect and participation by the community, that they want to make this a, a lasting, um, you know, a state-of-the-art, the conference to go to, and that is beyond thrilling to FGL. It certainly is to me. Businessman and healthcare consultant Quint Studer hosted the 2019 Lung Cancer Symposium at the Studer Community Institute in Pensacola. He says the impact is far-reaching. I think it's something that saves lives. And one of the challenges you have in any medical profession is when you look at Brigham Women's and the work they do at the Harvard Medical School, it's the best in the world. Now to try to say to 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 healthcare professionals, why don't you go there to learn the best techniques for, for cancer and so on, it's just not gonna happen. Plus they're gonna go independently and then come back so you don't get that critical mass. And what impressed me about, about Fred in every way, but once again, Fred, he knew the money had to go there because the research was there. But he really wanted the impact to not only be worldwide, but it will be, but he particularly wanted the Pensacola professionals to learn the best techniques in treating cancer. And the other thing it does is creates that connection. It creates the connection so our caregivers know who the experts are up there. So when they call them about a local person, um, a question, they're already in that loop and they know. So he's created a a direct line from here to the best healthcare in the world. The first two conferences were held in the then newly opened Levin Center for IHMC Research, named for Fred Levin after he donated $1 million to its construction. The Institute for Human and Machine Cognition pioneers research in a variety of technologies, including robotics, and is just one of many special and exciting features of Fred's beloved hometown of Pensacola. Like he hoped, Hosting the conference in Pensacola expands a range of opportunities for collaboration and connection. 
there's no question that our providers, our caregivers, not only at Baptist, but throughout the community have benefited from the knowledge that's shared. You know, clinical advancements change rapidly, and the deployment and dissemination of that's critical for success, and without a doubt, we have benefited and we've elevated medical care because of this. So when we have opportunities like this, we are so excited because we know that as we look through the lens of our organization and our mission, it's all about lifting the community. And we seek out opportunities just like this that have a direct and local impact. And this, there's probably no better example of that than this conference today. The Frederick G. Levin Lung Cancer Symposium is not just about sharing the latest medical discoveries, it's also about discovering Pensacola's many other amenities, including the area's natural beauty, rich history, and charm. Our sunrises, our sunsets, our water, our white sand, um, our southern charm, our fine dining, our hearty dining, um, the walkability of downtown, they have welcomed it with open arms, and, and as they should. I mean, we don't have to sell it, it sells itself. Um, but it's been such a blessing to actually see that many of them have brought their family members in uh, for many vacation at the end of the conference. And I think it has allowed them to have a vacation while they're working uh, in a, a place that is akin to paradise. Fred Levin's award-winning career as a trial lawyer and colorful life, both in and out of the court, room made him a legend. From taking on corporate giants to managing professional boxer Roy Jones Jr., Fred was a celebrity at home and worldwide. His landmark rewrite of Florida's Medicaid law allowed for the state to pursue and win litigation against big tobacco for tobacco-related illnesses, and he donated $10 million of the award he received from the case to the University of Florida in 1999, resulting in the law school being named after him. He recently celebrated the 20th anniversary of that donation. At the time, it was the largest private contribution to any law school. Despite his enormous success, it was Fred's love of winning and helping people that kept him motivated. Before COVID-19, he was still in the office almost every day and working cases. When a client came to see me, they uh, they got it all. They, they it, it was, uh, there was no BS. There was, uh, uh, even on the smallest of cases, they, they got full preparation. You can ask the judges, Judge Blanchard, who the building, the courthouse is named for, he wrote the Florida Bar that I was the best in this area and I was the best probably in the state of Florida, maybe in the nation, as a trial lawyer. It's not because I had anything special but it's because of uh, preparation. And uh, I could go on and on and on with all of the wonderful uh, awards that I've received. But uh, instead of standing there and saying, I really didn't deserve this, or I did deserve all of those things, and not just in the practice of law, but in, in everything, because I worked at it. I. I uh, so, I mean, I could be humble and say, oh, this is so great because I did not deserve it. No, I, I worked. I really worked at every one of them. Because of his financial success, Fred had a long history of generosity, including giving another $2 million to Dana-Farber Institute to further cancer research. He has also given generously to his community, donating to IHMC, the YMCA, and other local charities. He was always looking for ways to give back to a community that he grew up in and really took so much from. It's truly an honor to work at the firm that my grandfather helped build. You know, uh, most people think that the firm originated with him. It really originated with my great uncle, David. Uh, but my grandfather's hard work uh, as well as Ruben Askews and David, as well as uh, Stanley Levin, and so many other individuals that came through Levin Papantonio really built it up to be this massive, massive firm with a heavy footprint all throughout the nation. So I consider it an honor just to be able to try to continue and extend that legacy that my grandfather helped create in the first place. Fred Levin also made numerous contributions to the University of West Florida, including donating his $8 million estate, Timeless Tanglewood, to the University in honor of his late friend and former law partner, Florida's 37th Governor, Reuben O.D. Askew. Dr. Saunders sees endless opportunities here for the hospitality, arts, history, and design programs. Also, you know, management and marketing. I mean, I can see this 
this house being sort of a centerpiece for a number of our programs and our students. I think UWF and Dr. Saunders is going to take great advantage of this. UWF President Dr. Martha Saunders remembers what a legend Fred Levin was in the courtroom and to his hometown. He was ours. <laughs> he was ours. You know, he uh, wasn't someone that uh, he, he loved this community and it showed. First time I met Fred was many years ago and he was already famous and I was sort of junior assistant to something I don't remember but we sat together at an event that had students uh, and so and I noticed how he was so very curious. He wanted to know, he wasn't patronizing the students, he really wanted to know what they thought about things and the students were very engaged and I remember sitting there thinking, this man is, you know, super famous, uh, and he's nice, <laughs> and he's nice. And, and I thought, what a model uh, that you can go and do great things and you can still help people and you still care about people. From his practice to his philanthropy, we are grateful for Mr. Fred Levin's amazing legacy of hard work, generosity, and perseverance. And we look forward to continuing the Frederick G. Levin Lung Cancer Symposium in his honor. The symposium truly meant so much to my grandfather. And although he's passed, I know that he's up there watching and excited to see what all of the individuals today are doing to make the symposium work and make it even better. Like everything that he did, he set the foundation and set a high standard and it's now up to us to continue that standard and push it forward and continue his legacy 